The statue's location was chosen for a reason, as it stands between the Fondamenta Nuove embankment and the island of San Michele, the city cemetery, also known as the Island of the Dead. This cemetery is home to Igor Stravinsky, Diaghilev, and Brodsky, among others. It's a point on land from which the path to the other world, and for certain souls the way back, may be traced with some clarity. One might ask, why Dante? Well, in 1988, I took part in a competition at the Ravenna Biennial of the Sculpture of Small Forms. The Dantesco Center there runs divine comedy contests, Inferno, Purgatorio, Paradiso, and then the cycle begins anew. There's an international jury many participants from all over the world. And the restriction is that the piece can be no more than 40 centimeters tall, a bronze piece on a wooden pedestal. They're quite particular about that part. The piece I made was Ugolino-themed. I was awarded a prize for my work. And after that, they made me a member of the jury. And so, the topic of Dante. I feel close to it. These characters are always a part of me. I remember I was in Venice and I was going past San Michele and I just saw this thing, a vision. I saw it and then began to look around. There were so many people standing there, I thought they'd see it any moment now. Sometimes you get this extra clear image of something and that's what happened. I understood that this place was the only place for this to happen. It all grew out of a small sketch I made back in 1998. I was going to install the sculpture at the turn of the millennium. I saw it as one of the events to commemorate the changeover. But you see, it dragged on for just about nine years.
Having it approved was unthinkable. In 1998, I showed this work to the Russian honorary consul in Venice, an Italian by birth and a Venetian, Alberto Sandretti. And all those years later, he would never forgot this idea and was tremendously helpful in many ways. If it were not for his efforts, I would not have gotten the permission to install the work. There was a risk of flooding during very high water, and there could have been a situation when the boat would have gone underwater. The pontoon system that I came up with is a good solution because there is flexibility and there is its own rhyme and reason to it, its own philosophy. The movement is constant, and it's important that the structure always remains stable with respect to the surface. And the tectonics of the installation itself are visible. These two pilings on braces and the platform. On the water, the scale of the visible is different. Things appear not at all the way they do on land. Now, if you start approaching from afar and looking at this silhouette, it will first seem very significant from a distance, then get smaller and then we'll begin to grow again. And it all depends on what your eye catches in the surroundings, which buildings, on what scale, on the left, on the right. The scale is made up of all these things. And this was the main difficulty, to get the size exactly right. I somehow sensed what it needed to be like, because this is not something you calculate, it's more of a feeling. And I believe I got the scale right. I don't think it's something that oppresses, nor does it disappear or evaporate. It occupies its rightful place, whether you're approaching it or you're at a great distance from it, say more than a kilometer away.
because a point is always visible on the water. Just think, a bottle bobbing along is visible, a seagull on the surface is visible, especially if you were looking at the horizon and not toward the shore. It's exactly that effect. It appears there all the time. You see the island, then the lagoon leading there, then the lagoon going toward the Lido, then suddenly Fundamenta Nuove turns out to be right there, and this change in perspective is constant, and the sculptural aspect has been executed accordingly. If you were looking at it from San Michele, you see these more active slits. They are visible against the buildings in the background, and in the other direction, things are more neutral. All this is done consciously. If you take apart the sculptural solution, it is utterly modern, and yet all the while the reference to the Quattrocento is there. Giotto and company are all there. Besides, the sculpture has to be, to some extent, Italian, as a tribute to that culture, to the way it has influenced and continues to actively influence us today.